another question related to proptosis so proptosis baby there has been a time when three questions need 2020 mein there were three questions on the proptosis at a stretch so let's see most common cause of proptosis in the middle age so whenever we are talking about the adults guys it is always always thyroid eye disease see when i am talking about um, this proptosis in children okay whenever i am talking about the proptosis in children the causes are different there you will have to see is it uh, unilateral proptosis or is it the bilateral proptosis if it is unilateral proptosis look for the orbital cellulitis then you have to look for orbital cellulitis now there are a uh, couple of questions which are um, around structured around this optic uh, orbital cellulitis first of all the cause so mainly it is due to the staph aureus orbital cellulitis is mainly due to the staph aureus uh, it is presenting with the unilateral proptosis usually it is not severe in itself but yes it can lead to an emergency that is called as the cavernous sinus thrombosis that can be cavernous sinus thrombosis now cavernous sinus thrombosis is also unilateral to start with but it can become bilateral in about 50 percent of the cases because you know it's a paired sinus so in the beginning it can be unilateral but it can go and become bilateral in about 50 percent of the cases moreover there are so many nerves which are passing through the cavernous sinus can you tell me guys which nerves are passing through cavernous sinus if you uh, see through the center and uh, this is the lateral wall okay now center say we have internal carotid artery and the sixth nerve while uh, lateral wall say third nerve fourth nerve and the fifth nerve i am not commenting on the divisions of fifth nerve the reason is that there has been an update that in cadaver we have first and second division both and in the living we have only first division so uh, let's not talk about it uh, we are talking about the nerves okay so that means when all these nerves are passing obviously ophthalmoplegias can take place proptosis can take place chemosis hai, congestion hai, everything is there and yes three four five and six okay and six is the first one to get affected due to the six nerve we can also get the diplopia we can get the diplopia in the lateral gaze we can get the diplopia in the lateral gaze this is the first very very important uh, manifestation that you can get so, uh, whenever you are getting cavernous sinus thrombosis uh, or you are getting the diplopia in the lateral gaze think about the other one because six nerve is passing through the center of cavernous sinus and um, then you can diagnose it the diagnostic feature diagnostic feature will be the mastoiditis so easily you can make the diagnosis by the tenderness as the mastoid process you can check by this that is called as the mastoiditis and once you know diagnosis is confirmed treatment is not a problem while if i am talking about the bilateral proptosis so bilateral proptosis in cases of um, the children is mainly due to the metastasis alarming signal here think about some tumor and um, usually the metastasis that is taking place is aml aml or the chloromas so again leukemias hai, or it can be the neuroblastomas or it can be the neuroblastomas i think we will have some question on horizontal gaze palsy and i'll talk about it okay this is about uh, the children but uh, when i talk about the adults so when i talk about uh, the proptosis in the adults then you have to always think about the thyroid eye disease now thyroid eye disease though it is uh, more common in uh, females it is more common in the middle age with the history of smoking if uh, that is their history of thyroid status 
if i see 90% of the people will give me the hyperthyroid status now that is most commonly there okay now we are thinking about the thyrotoxicosis or the graves disease but 6% of the people will also be euthyroid that is a uh, important thing and even 4% of the people will also be hypothyroid okay so just because the patient was having a euthyroid 6% of the people will also be euthyroid. So, just because the patient is having the euthyroid status, you cannot rule out the thyroid eye disease. That is an important thing. Um, then, uh, earliest sign. Now, there is a lot of uh, confusion that the earliest sign of the proptosis uh, of the thyroid eye disease is proptosis. No, guys. Proptosis is most important. Hai, but earliest, it's not there. It has to be the upper lid retraction. Upper lid retraction is the earliest sign followed by the proptosis. Proptosis is most common but not the earliest. That is another important thing. Uh, if I talk about the pathology, pathology of the thyroid eye disease. So, it can be primary pathology, it can be secondary pathology. Primary pathology is in the orbit. And which cells are affected? It is the fibroblast, orbital fibroblast cells. Hai. We have a lot of edema in the orbital cavity and actually that is leading to the proptosis while secondary pathology will take place in the extraocular muscles. Muscles are affected and muscles may what we have is the fibrosis. Due to the fibrosis, we have the restrictive squint. So, there are so many questions related to this which can be asked. We have uh, the proptosis, we have fibroblast, then we have restrictive squint. Can you tell me the test that you can do to differentiate between the restrictive squint and the paralytic squint? Anyone can answer? The test that we can do for the differentiation between the restrictive squint and the paralytic squint. Meanwhile, I will uh, tell you the order of the extraocular muscles. The order of the extraocular muscles which are involved is I am slow. This is the order of the muscles that is inferior rectus, medial rectus, superior rectus, lateral rectus and uh, then is the oblique. Yes, very correct. So, we can do the force duction test. With the help of force duction test, you can easily differentiate between the paralytic squint and the restrictive squint, right? A very, very important sign that you get here is the Coca-Cola bottle sign. That is important thing. Coca-Cola bottle sign you are getting on the radio imaging and usually they will give you a word that is sparing of the tendons. Sparing of the tendons will be there. Uh, the origin and the insertion part are not involved uh, whenever there is thyroid eye disease. So that means if you have this uh, sparing of the origin and insertion, you have sparing of the tendons. That is again a very, very important thing that you can get in the question. See, once you know that it's a thyroid eye disease, it's not difficult to answer any question. So my focus is to get the diagnosis. So, what are the things that will help you in pinching the diagnosis? You will get the sparing of tendons, you will get the fibrosis of the muscles, restrictive squint hai, smoking hai, youth thyroid bhi ho sakta hai, female hai, middle age hai. All these things will help you in making the diagnosis. Once the diagnosis is confirmed, telling about any of the signs, about any of the treatment is not difficult. So, I hope it's clear guys, right? Then, uh, coming to the next question, 